are you? Well, this is the last interview today uh, on this long afternoon talking with, with women and this has been amazing. So you are the last one, you have a responsibility, so are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, this is a lot of pressure. I don't know. <laughs> I and, believe in us, Carla. We got this. <laughs> We're closing <it> out. <laughs> How are you doing? You have been releasing music the last couple of months. Yeah. Do you like it? Yes, I li uh, three three songs. If I'm not wrong, yes, um, we uh, we um, a song called "Bottom of a Bottle" and "Sleeping with the Enemy," and most recently "Yorktown." And we have had amazing feedback. It's so cool to finally be releasing music. Um, our last album came out in 2017, so we were really itching to get new music out to you and. I'm so glad that we finally were able to. I think personally, it saved my whole lockdown. <laughs> I was kind of going insane, like really insane. And then we started releasing music and I definitely feel much better. <laughs> so we're really happy about it. How many, um, you have released a three song, but how many songs have you wrote during this lockdown? Quite a, quite a few. We've got our, our pockets full of new songs. Now. And, uh, you know, we just, but this, the stuff that we've been releasing is stuff that we recorded just before the pandemic. And we had a plan, you know, a timeline of the way things that were supposed to go. And then when the pandemic happened, you know, we didn't know kind of how to navigate this new world at first. And we had to figure out what would be most beneficial to do sit on the songs for a while, release them anyways when we can't tour on them. So it was a kind of like confusing time and we didn't know what to do. And then finally we're like, we, we got to get these songs out because we're dying, not doing anything. So I think that was the right decision. And then obviously we've had, we've got many more to come. So oh. it's, it's exciting. That's nice. I mean, we definitely wrote a bunch of music, uh, but that's for future stuff. <laughs> so The ones that we are super excited to show you guys throughout, you know, 2021, um, as Carla stated, they're old songs. So they're, it's old news to us. So we're still itching to get back into the studio and record more. I think for us, our work is never done. <laughs> so <laughs> pandemic or not, we, we have to keep working. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now you have released uh, three singles. And but the last time you released music was with Lilith, in, as, as you have said. Uh, are you um, planning a different kind of releasing your music? Because nowadays, uh, uh, pop stars and reggaeton and that kind of music used to release uh, songs single by single. Are you planning something like that for the Butcher Baby's future, or will you release a, f a full album in the future? I think we're probably going to do a mix of both. I kind of like this, what we're doing right now, releasing a new single every month with a video too, because everyone loves visuals. So I think that doing is a really cool way to reach people um, constantly. Um, you know, I, I feel like getting an album now is like binge watching a TV show and then having it all over with. I kind of like this, this thing where you actually have to wait for the new song and it comes out and you're excited about it. And then you're excited for the next one to come out. So we're going to do this for a little while and then um, maybe, you know, a full length album also in the future. But I think this is the way to go for the current time. You know, it's been really nice too being able to give each song the the attention that it deserves. When we wrote these songs, each one had a special component for us. Um, each one really brought along its own life, and so uh, it's been nice to be able to be like, okay, let's focus on this one song for a couple months, and then this one song for a couple months. Let's think of artwork, visuals, everything that goes into planning a release. And I'm so happy to be able to do that. It kind of brings me back to when we were writing the music and the special things that we felt and the magic we felt while writing. And so, uh, you know, as she stated, each time it's like, ooh, a new release. It's like, oh, a new episode. <laughs> so, um, Later on, I'm sure a full-length album will come out, but each song that we, we have uh, releases going up until much later in the year. So 
it's it's definitely been an exciting thing to do singles. It's just we haven't done that in our career, and I really really like this platform. And are you for your next uh, full album? Are you working with some labor, or are you working in your own? So we're we're in this again navigating through a new world where we don't have a label, but we have distribution through Blood Blast, which is awesome. Uh, they've been really great to us, and. Um, You know, it's not that there's no labels out there for us. There could be the perfect one, and we just haven't, you know, found it yet. But right now, we thought, you know, why not try something a little bit different? We kind of live in an age where you don't necessarily have to have a label. I feel like if you have a great, you know, manager, a great lawyer, a great, you know, agent, that's kind of a, a great team to to help, you know, push along your career. So um, if you're able to pay for your own recordings and and get that kind of stuff going and you have a strong fan base as it is, why not try it like this? Um, again, the whole music industry has changed so much over the last even five years since we've been a band, it's changed um, tremendously over the last decade. So um, this is a new kind of thing that we're trying out. And uh, if a great deal comes along, we'll be happy to take it. But in the meantime, we're kind of enjoying doing things on our own. You Full know, it's big Yeah, it's been interesting because a lot of our friends in the industry have kind of taken our the way that we're, we decided to do it too, which was to leave the label and try stuff on our own. And it's been almost like a little bit more successful. I think that later on, if the right deal comes along, sure. But, you know, it wasn't something that we set out to do is resign. We had offers, but just... It just didn't make sense for us. We wanted to really do this on our own. We'd we'd been signed pretty much our entire career. So it was a, a really fun and neat experience to kind of do it on our own. And it's paid off a lot. It really has. So, but like I said, if the right deal comes along later on, we'll see. I don't know. We're doing fine as we are. <laughs> money is always, is always welcome. So if a yeah. label comes with a lot of money and you can work even in a bigger way. Welcome. Oh, <laughs> totally absolutely. welcome. And how have been how have been how has been your um, uh, writing process during this lockdown? Because you well, have been separated. Yeah, everyone lives in different places now. Um, but that's okay. You know, it's like there's there's this thing called technology. We're using it right now to <laughs> to do this interview. And it's, you know, um, so we've got FaceTimes and Skypes and, you know, um, moving files back and forth. So I really don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, obviously, when we're in a room together, that's when we work best because all the little, you know, things kind of go to the wayside. You know, if we're just anything, as soon as we get in a room together playing music, even if we're irritated with each other or something's weird or there's been like a distance or anything, it's like, Back to the Butch Baby's magic. So we definitely work well, like in a room together writing, but it's just, it's a different world. And sometimes you can't be together. So instead of just being stagnant, you at least have to try to make the best of it. And uh, I think that we've done that. So what we'll do is we'll record onto like a cassette tape. We'll give it to a stork and we'll be like, fly this to Chicago. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> Not via email, no. <laughs> We'll put a message in a bottle and we'll send it right off. No, it's <laughs> it's been really it's been fairly easy to write. Obviously, it doesn't go as fast as it would if we were all in the same room, but it's been easy. This is the new climate, and um, every single band has to do this right now. So yeah. it's kind of relieving to feel like okay, we're all in the same boat. Everyone's dealing with the same issues, the same problems. So um, I think as an industry, we've all kind of like piled together like we got this guys you know and you see that a lot with the quarantine jams and you know people teaming up and you know uh putting together content for um you know for the fans including this you know and it's been really cool to see the industry really do this in a time of need and the writing process is uh, all the bands are writing in in their houses but For example, the photo shoots or the video clips. How have you been working on that stuff? Well, that's something that you actually will have to get together and do. Um, uh, 
Well, so, which is actually a nice little, well, last time we tried to do it, uh, COVID, someone got COVID, not the band, but someone on our team, so we had to cancel everything and sort of start over, do it again. But I think as long as everyone's safe and you can get together and, you know, uh, get your tests done and then you can be um, together for a week and you get your videos done and you get your photo shoots done and uh, a little recording done. And um, I think that it, it all still works out. We haven't been able to um, actually get together and do any photo shoots. We, like Carla said, we tried, but we haven't been able to. And um, which is coming up. We are doing it soon. <laughs> Everyone's getting their tests, <laughs> but um, we're, we're doing it soon. So we're really excited to finally have a photo shoot with the full band, finally do our live stream because we had to reschedule it. And, uh, you know, we have we have a video that just came out for Yorktown, our song. And that video was filmed in February of 2020 before the pandemic hit. We flew to Utah in the U.S. and we went and filmed it at my parents' studio there. And it was awesome and it was so much fun, but that was the last time we really got to get together and film a music video. It was a, like over a year ago at this point. So we're really excited to finally get together, you know, do a live stream concert, play some music together. I, I think that that's the number one thing that's missing from all of our lives right now is just that feeling of live music. And so I know once we all step in a room together and, play that first note, it, there's going to be a rejuvenation of life. <laughs> We're all just going to feel reborn. <laughs> and uh, you have said that uh, you have been trying new ways. And I've seen you are uh, also in, in tweets. You are on tweets. Um, yes. um, do you think that uh, the bands uh, should be in that platform? Because here in Spain, uh, we've seen that many gamers uh, video gamers are in that platform and they are earning a lot of money so do you think that it's a, a good option for for the artist i think in this day and age you got to do what you can to make money or you're dead in the water and i think that most people would rather see their favorite bands do some twitch and you know donate a a little bit of money to them rather than have their favorite bands not exist after two years of a pandemic at all. So, um, you know, I feel like it's definitely weird and, and band members have to go into uncharted territory that they may not feel comfortable with. You know, Heidi and I are very like, we like talking to people. We enjoy being on camera. We like doing that kind of things, but a lot of people in bands don't um, like to do that thing. They don't like to kind of go above and beyond and like do anything outside the box. Um, but Again, uh, sometimes you in life, in you know, not just in music world, but in life, you have to kind of go beyond what you, your comfort zone is and, and try new things and learn new skills so that you can um, survive. Absolutely. We are now live on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And I think it's really cool to be able to get on there and actually talk to your favorite artist and be a part of a community with them. Um, I know I love watching certain artists twitches and I think with us it's been really cool to show the different avenues of our lives on there. Um, I know uh, you know we even though we are on sep we're in separate parts of the country we can get together on Twitch and it's like we're in the same room and I love that it's really fun. Yeah um, and well um Uh, as I've told you before, uh, this interview is is been doing because uh, this is uh, today is uh, March 8th, the International Women Day. So uh, <laughs> I could like to talk with you about this because uh, you have been uh, very I don't know if I can say polemic uh, in some times of your career. And first of all, I would like to to know if Uh, well, you two ha have, like, I don't know how to say, public relationship. I mean, uh, Carla, you are with, with Charlie, uh, and you two, well, you used to stream with your, with your boyfriend. So, uh, mm -hmm. does it affect to, to the band or to the popularity of the band that you have uh, made that relationships public? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't understand the question. Do you mean it has it affected because we talk about our relationships openly? 
Um, yeah, because, because ma maybe in the, in the music industry, uh, the labels or some companies uh, uh, tell to the artists, uh, uh, hey, uh, take your private life in a dark side and you have to show like you are single, you know? Yeah, I think that's a very old school idea. I think that that was super popular in the 80s, you know, with the hot guy musicians and they couldn't admit they had like a wife or a, or a girlfriend because it would take away from the female fan base thinking that they were single and available. But, um, and, you know, same with, with women. Um, so I, I think it's a little bit different. And, um, you know, also we're not like young girls that are trying to be like the, the cute single um chick that's I, I don't know i think it's an outdated idea i really really do um i don't think that um me being public about my relationship has really hurt my career in any way you know if anything it would enhance it a little bit because he's got his own name um and he's very supportive of our band he always has been and um you know so that i don't think it has affected um you know it's uh, maybe different for heidi because uh her and henry um you know a lot of people when you're in a band together people oh, you're going to ruin the band you're going to do this so I mean, i've heard some people say say silly stuff like that to her uh, it's which is funny. it's funny because henry and i have been together for almost 10 years like a long time <laughs> as long as the band has been together and when we post about each other, people think it's new. <laughs> people are like, oh, no, you're going to ruin the band. I'm like, we're, we've been fine for 10 years. <laughs> like, you know, we're actually celebrating our anniversary next week. And it's like, you know, it's, it's for us, when we first got together, we definitely had this uh, thing where I remember we got on the phone with a potential manager and he was like, now, you guys are dating in the band. You can't let people know that. And I'm like, too late. <laughs> um, but when we were that manager, the first thing he said was, I want to know who's fucking who in the band. And we're like, wow, this is not the guy for us. Um, <laughs> really? We were, we were yeah. I can hear like silence. <laughs> like, oh, what? Yeah. But, you know, when we first started dating about 10 years ago, it was, it was still pretty taboo. And I still think that there are, there are bands that deal with that. Um, I, I know, uh, I'm not going to drop names obviously, but I know a girl in the industry who is married and her manager and label has basically told her to not talk about it. Now it's become a little bit more public knowledge over the past couple of years, but it was, it was definitely told, like told to her to not make it known. And, um, and I know a couple other people that are in that kind of same vein. It is an old school idea. You know, in the age of social media, we create our own stories. It used to be where the publicity or the press created this character of yourself. Now you can kind of deem that in your own way. And I don't think it at all has hurt us to be, you know, in relationships. Um, our fan base is a lot older than, you know, um, we, we, uh, our target market. Yeah, we, there are kid fans, but our target market, you know, the older metalheads. And I think that they respect that and they respect a, a working relationship, especially when we have to tour. Um, you know, Carla has to be away from her significant other. Me, I'm stuck with mine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> On tour. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I always joke about that. But it's like, you know, these things can definitely be strains on relationships. And it does take a lot of work to make them work. And as much focus as you have on your career, um, it takes work to make that relationship work, too, which in the end can be the most, you know, the most important thing in your life to work on. Cause that hopefully will be there once all the, the bright stars and the stages and the lights are gone. And so, <clears throat> you know, it is a difficult thing to work on, but you know, if, if, a, if a fan were to come to us and be like, I can't be a fan of the band because I thought you guys were single and you're not, then I'd be like, sayonara. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, I would not do a disservice to my 
relationship with my boyfriend by not, you know, acknowledging him. Um, I think that would just be so horrible to do to somebody, you know, and like kind of just not acknowledge their presence at all in your life just because you want to make sure that some fan somewhere is thinking you're single and available to them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Me and Heidi used to joke that we were married when fans would ask if we were single at the merch booth, remember? We'd be like, we're actually married. <laughs> we're married. We would joke about it. People thought we were serious, like, for years and years and years. Did you guys bring that? <laughs> A crazy night in Las Vegas. <laughs> really ruined the band is when me and Heidi broke up and she started dating Henry. <laughs> it was so <laughs> <awful>. <laughs> That's the real story. <laughs> and uh, while you have been um, working with labels, um, have you felt that mm, they wanted to uh, sexualize your your appearance just for increase your popularity or yourselves? I, I honestly don't think we've ever faced that or no one has ever told us how to look, how to dress, how to be, how to be. Um, we've never, we've been so lucky because I, I hear a lot of stories about, you know, we, we were toured with someone who said that her label said she couldn't have her hair a certain way because she didn't look uh, sexy and pretty enough with her hair a certain way. And like, we've never, we, we, we can do whatever we want, which is awesome. I think for us, we kind of started our career as don't tell me what our whole thing was. Don't tell me what to look like. Don't tell me what to sound like. Don't tell me what to dress like. And that's kind of where the attitude first came of the band. And so with the label that we were signed to, I think that they respected that about us and they were on board with that. Um, and, you know, if someone were to come at me and say, oh, I think you need to lose weight or, oh, I think you need to change your hair. Oh, I think you should wear this as your makeup. I'd be like, okay, this relationship's not going to work. Um, we've been very lucky to not be pressured in any way. But as Carla said, we have heard horror stories from other females, which is really sad. Yeah, well, um, uh, a few minutes before, uh, we've been talking with Cobra from Cobra and Lotus, and she has yeah. told us that uh, her first uh, label, uh, or management, I, I can't remember, uh, told her that uh, she had to lose 10 pounds. So that's one of, uh, that's an example uh, you have been... Yeah, we've heard we've heard from so many females in the industry that their, you know, their management has said something or their label has said something. And I think the, the dynamic between Carla and I has always been like super fierce. And I think if, if a male in the industry or at a label or even a female were to come to either of us and say something, I think that they realize that they'd get two bullheaded ladies at them. <laughs> so they don't want to be in the middle of that sandwich, do they? <laughs> too, it was always different because people were so intrigued, but they didn't know why they were intrigued. And they didn't quite know what to do with us. So they were like, I better not say anything. I better just let them do what they're doing because I like it. And I can't even explain why I like it, but I do. And... When you have heard about that, the stories uh, you have said, uh, what was uh, when you was uh, when you were listening to that females? Uh, how was uh, their faces when they were explaining you that that yeah, shit? Obviously upset, and um, you know we we have toured with Cobra, and we have heard her stories as well, and we've heard from many other women. And just yeah, it's obviously um very upsetting to to uh to anyone when they're told that they can't uh be who they envision themselves as like we're so lucky that we can be who we want to be because like you well, know we've been talking about it's just not something that everyone gets to do well also if someone were to tell us you need to be this way like we would just not listen but uh i have a, a gal pal who I mean, like we've heard all for, for on different spectrums where they're not metal enough or they're not pretty enough or they're too pretty or they're it's like you can't win. There's always uh, someone who wants the opposite. You're not metal enough. You're too metal. You're 
you're this and that you're not this you're that you're not this and I think watching their faces in them telling us this story their stories it sucks um I in particular one friend explaining a story to me recently I could totally tell on her face that she felt in that moment and it was a while ago that this had happened but even explaining it back to me it's like a sense of almost like sadness because this metal community is supposed to be you're supposed to be celebrated for who you are celebrated for being different celebrated for you know your individuality and when as you know as it has progressed where more and more females are in the industry and people telling us you know all these it's almost like a magazine in front of us you need to look like this this is what you need to represent and uh we didn't grow up that way we grew up listening to heavy metal where it was like you're friends with all different kinds of people and they're all celebrated for their uniqueness. And um, it's kind of sad to see, like I said, it's a sadness to see that uh, the industry has kind of shifted where they want you to be cookie cutter. They want you to fit you. They want you to fall into a category that, uh, you know, fits their agenda rather than your own individual agenda. And I think that that's sad. Yeah, and I think it was in uh, 2013 when you released uh, Goliath. Um, uh, when you had your shows, you were almost naked, just with crosses in your nipples. Uh, what kind yeah. of comments did you receive uh, when you were doing that kind of tour? Because I I I couldn't be be there because you played in Madrid. I don't I can't remember the. The venue, shock or I don't, I can't remember, but in the center yeah. of the city. The... Well, that's that was before. We had never. We only did one tour here in the states with with that. We only wore that for like six months, and that was mostly local in Los Angeles. We never really toured the okay. world like that at all. But so you would have um, missed it if you came to the show, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it was, you know, an ode to Wendy Williams, the first female in metal. And, you know, she wore that outfit. And it wasn't us getting up there and being like, ooh, I'm sexy. It was us doing the same show we do now, which is just in your face, balls to the wall, just wearing that outfit. <coughs> of course, when we first started. COVID. I was all in. I was all <laughs> upstream and then um i mean we had comments where people were like if you ever come to my town you better hide i've got a shotgun waiting for you you know that we had death threats we had all sorts of crazy shit you know not only just because of our outfit but because our very first intro to the public was us covering pantera and people were so fucking mad that we covered pantera as two females <laughs> they were so mad um but to this day and it's been I think the last time we wore nipple tape and I think just nipple tape and not dresses with it was in 2011, early 2011. That was the last okay. time. And so it's been 10 years <laughs> and people still to this day put on clothes. And I'm like, do you, have you looked at, I, I mean, I wear more clothes on, on stage than people wear to church. You know what I mean? Like I, like, I'm actually a very modest person. And back then it was a character, you know, it was an ode to the lady who paved the way for girls like us to get on stage. And um, people were pissed and we still deal with that, but it's something that we'll just deal with our whole lives. And um, of course uh, that was in 2011, I have to say, as you said, but I, I imagine that it, it uh, happened right now, nowadays, with the social media. Uh, do you think it would be different than 10 years before? I see, I see more and more females wearing nipple tape. I mean, I see more now than I saw then. Uh, it became, like, we, we had it in our show, in this moment, brought it into their, their dancers, wear it for, their, for the blood video. It's become... Oh, so when we did it, 
people classified it as fucking slutty, <laughs> even though it wasn't slutty, it was art. And now I think people look at it as art. I mean, um, we see females wearing nipple tape in their band photos or um, on stage all the time now in music videos all the time. And, you know, it's it's in pop culture, too. You've got Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, all these like, you know, pop rap stars doing it as well. And but when we did it, it was slutty. But now it's considered art. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it would be uh, considered something different these days. I don't see the negativity around it with other bands as I saw it with us. Um, but I'm also not searching out the negative stuff either. Um, I think when we see other females wearing nipple tape, we're like, yes, go get it, bitch. You got this. <laughs> I also think um, that it also has to do with a lot of the way that Heidi and I looked. Um, you know, typically if you see a girl wearing, you know, the nipple tape, we'll call it, and um, she, if she's covered in tattoos, I mean, Heidi is covered in tattoos now, but she wasn't back then. Um, and she has, you know, a certain look and she looks very metal, then maybe people won't be like, oh, that's a slutty look that, with the tape. But because we didn't, we weren't covered in tattoos and we didn't have that typical metal look. I, sh I say it in quotes because I don't believe there should be a typical metal look, but we didn't look like that. We looked more like, uh, you know, um, LA, girls, whatever you <laughs> call it. Um, people were, that seemed to be the trigger is that there was girls who were pretty. I don't, I, I have a hard time calling myself, you know, how it goes the same way. No one likes to say we were pretty girls wearing nipple tape, but that's how it was. We were attractive girls with that. So that's why it was such a problem, I think, to a lot of people. Um, it didn't, like, they it, in their minds, it didn't read right, you know, that we weren't supposed to be metal chicks, you know. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with comments uh, uh, from the fans la when they said sometimes that maybe your, su your success is just because you are good looking girls? We, well, I know we ignore comments. We, we know how hard it is to be successful, you know, in, in anything. Heidi and I both work our asses off for in literally everything that we do. And that's why I became friends with her you know, over a decade ago, because I saw someone who reflected my own passions and who was willing to work as hard as I was and vice versa. So um, it's, you know, being in a band is like some of the, mo the hardest and most, you know, it's work that you'll ever do, constant 24 hour a day job. And so for people to say, oh, you're just, you know, you just got successful because you're pretty is just ridiculous. We know it's ridiculous. So um, we don't even pay attention anymore, you know, it's, Everyone has bad days and they read the comments. We always say, don't read the comments, don't read the comments. But, but you have to just kind of ignore them and not play into them. Usually someone has a negative comp because they're not doing something with their lives that they wish they could do. So it's easier for them to, you know, come down on you for something. But Yeah, absolutely. And also, I think that our longevity in our career proves that wrong because, you know, you're not going to be a successful internationally touring band for 10 years, releasing music, you know, fans reciprocating, buying your merch, buying tickets to your shows, getting offered awesome fucking tours for 10 years just because you're a chick in a band. You know, that's just the novelty's worn off by then. And so um, it's not as prevalent we don't hear that as much as we used to. I mean, we used to hear it all the fucking time and we have very thick skin. There's nothing someone could say to either of us that we hadn't already heard up until this point. <laughs> you know, we were both in male dominated industries prior to getting in a, you know, forming this band together. And so for us, we've dealt with that in other aspects. You know, I was a radio DJ and people were like, Oh, it's, you know, you have to have the the token female you know she's the token female and it's like nah bitch i got here because i worked hard and that's kind of how it is for us here you know we got here we've lasted 10 years a little over 10 years now actually because we worked hard because we pushed and pushed and pushed against the grain where people always told us no 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 this is not for you we were always like yes it is let me in <laughs> so <laughs> And then we just blow that torch down. We blow the house down, you know. And so it's, uh, you know, it, it 
10 years of, of this kind of proves against the whole theory that just because you're a girl in a band, that's where your success comes from. Yeah. I guess that you don't pay attention to the bullshit or disgusting comments in, in your social media, but uh, do you used to receive that kind of bullshit or dick pics in your direct messages or something like that? They'll do. Yep, we sure do. And guess what? When you send them, we laugh at them. So <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. When I get a dick pic, so does the rest of the band because everyone's seeing it. When Carla gets a dick pic, the rest of the band gets the dick pic because we, we share it with everybody. When you send us vulgar stuff, that screenshot goes to everyone. I mean, there's people who have talked, like, said nasty stuff to us that I think I've probably shared with over, like, 50 people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, like, the, the ultra good ones, I mean, this stuff goes out to every single friend group. I'm like, does your band get this fan mail? Do you guys get this fan mail? <laughs> so, so, we, uh, yeah, I, to us, it's, it's funny now. And we share it, and you know, all, people don't know this, but like all of us girls in the metal world, like we share this stuff with each other because it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so I think I just blew our cover, guys. <laughs> so if you send some dick pics or some bullshit to them, you know where you can find your pictures <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and have you had some? uncomfortable or disgusting situations uh, in, in your tours or, well, in your music career? You know, everyone has little situations once in a while, but for the most part, we've been pretty lucky. Uh, people behave themselves. Um, and uh, even at our meet and greets on our bus, we, we definitely have a standard that we want people to <laughs> behave, uh, you know, when they come on the bus and everything. And I think that when people w actually watch our show in person, there's like this respect thing. Um, so we don't really have to deal with too many problems. And if we do have a person that has been a problem for us, their picture's up at the front door, do not let this person in, and they've ruined it for themselves. There was one time. I remember one time we were in uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. Oh yeah. Some guy. So we, I, I always jump in the pit every at, at the end of every show. I jump in the pit and I make people circle around me. So Carla joined, me and um, it was like her first time. We were so excited. Like Carla, you're gonna get in the pit with me. This is gonna be amazing. <clears throat> Carla jumps down to get in the pit, and some guy sticks, puts her his thumb. <laughs> Right where it shouldn't go. Oh. And um, I'm in the middle. Yeah. I'm in the middle of the pit making people circle around me. And I hear thunk, thunk, thunk over the PA. And I turn around and Carly beating the shit out of the guy with her microphone. <laughs> we learned this lesson. Yeah. I, I will not hesitate to, if I'm, if someone does something like that, like others, you're getting punched 100%. So, um, but, but again, that is, it's such a rare thing. Um, yeah. But I still will punch. <laughs> though, the noise of his head being hit with that microphone was <laughs> right loud. We should have just, pulled it. This was years and years ago. And they pulled the dude out of the, out of the, out of the uh, venue and pulled him outside and left him on the side of the road. I, I don't know what security did to him, but. Um, that's like one story out of, I mean, we played thousands of shows. That's one story. Like I get, like I said, I get in the crowd every show and We've by women a lot too. And I always try to stress people just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you can, you know, grab and paw and try to touch my boobs. And it's just, it's silly, but, um, for the most part, um, it doesn't happen too much. Yeah, I guess. I just can't remember your last show. I don't know if it was... I think it was in Barcelona. That you broke your pants, Heidi. <laughs> oh, yeah. <I'm> yes! <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and I remember uh, it was, you know... I, I think, yeah, you asked, like, what's the most embarrassing thing? And that was it. That yes, was it. <laughs> absolutely. That and was I awesome. 
occupied stage and I was trying so hard. I was like, holy shit, the, our, our tech was getting tape and trying to tape my pants back together. <laughs> <laughs> and it just wasn't working. But luckily, the crowd and everyone was so fun and cool. Like, everyone laughed about it. I definitely couldn't do my normal, like, kicks <laughs> and everything because I was just going to moon the whole crowd. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, people people were still respectful. They were kind of laughing about it. Like, if I got close to them, they're all... <laughs> <laughs> you answered <laughs> my, my question that day in the stage. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I literally could not think of anything, and you witnessed your question. <laughs> yes. it, was it, was, it was very fun the next day in Madrid. I, I remember it. <laughs> Talking yeah, about that. And, I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that uh, you have to prove yourself and work harder than a man to get the same success in the music industry nowadays? I think that we did have to work a lot harder, but luckily we're the kind of people that are going to work harder regardless. Um, I think just to be in the music industry these days, because there's so many bands and there's such a greater reach to people through social media, I think you have to work your ass off, whether you're a man or a woman in this business nowadays, just to, to get you know, a foot in the door to get noticed and then you know write stuff that'll keep getting noticed. It's, it's a definitely a very different time than it was years ago. Yeah. Um, well, um, just for, for, the, for the end of the interview, would you like to share uh, a message to the female or, well, for everybody who is watching you right now? Because you're the last one. You have that responsibility <laughs> I told before. <laughs> I think that for me personally, it's just, you know, I... I remember being that little girl with, with big dreams. And um, if you want something, you just have to keep keep at it. You are what you do every day. So if there's something that you want to do, you know, hone your craft and then get out there and live your dream. Don't let anyone tell you no. But at the same time, be realistic. And again, put the work in. I think that's the one thing, you know, a lot of young people nowadays, people in general, they want all the rewards, but they don't want to put in the work. And I think that... Um, You know, you have to remember that you have to put in the hard work and it's not always an overnight thing. It could be five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, but uh, if you believe in yourself and you believe in uh, what you want, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us, it was, uh, you know, we we didn't start when we were young teenagers at this together. We started as full grown adults and you know, there's never a time in your life that you can't chase your dreams, whether you're a kid, you're middle-aged, you're, <clears throat> you know, retiring, there's always time to chase your real, your real dream. Um, whether it's music or acting or anything you want to do, anything, there's always time to do it. And, you know, even if you never get there, the journey is sometimes more important than The rewards. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, I think that chasing your dreams is the number one thing I would ever tell anyone. I have this tattooed on my arm. It says once upon a dream, because I always want to remember and remind myself that this all started as a dream. So anytime I feel, you know, beat down or tired or read a shitty comment or someone talks bad because we're chicks or whatever the case may be. Um, I always just have to remember that this all started as a dream and I dreamed to be here and I'm living my fucking dream. And so I think that that is the biggest thing for everyone. Follow your dreams. So a nice message, message, uh, you know, people follow your dreams and listen to Butcher Babies and follow them on social media, on Twitch and follow us too, please. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. It, it has been a pleasure, as always. And I hope that COVID uh, allowed um, to see you soon. So yeah, it, it, fingers it, crossed. Go, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for, for your time. And I hope you, you are healthy now and in the future. Until we see you the next time. You too. Thank you. You as well. <laughs>